not waste time. Let's open our Bibles. Uh, we, we read scriptures. We normally have this service, but don't take it normally. It's not a normal service. Something will happen to someone here. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I was reading uh, Deuteronomy 31. From 1 to 8, I want to give you some scriptures. Deuteronomy 3, 1. So Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I'm 120 years old today. I'm no longer able to come in and go out as your spiritual or military leader. And the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross this Jordan. Can you see that verse there? Yeah, one of us here. He said, the Lord said to me, you shall not cross this, this Jordan. It is the Lord your God who will cross ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you and you shall dispossess them. Joshua is the one who will go across before you. Just as the Lord has said, the Lord will do to them just as he did to Sihon and all the kings of the Amorites to their land when he destroyed them. The Lord will hand them over to you and you shall do to them in accordance with all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble in dread before them. For, for it is the Lord your God who goes, be, goes with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Then Moses called to Joshua and said to him, in the sight of all the, the people of Israel, be, be strong and courageous, because you will go before these people into the land that which the Lord has shown to their fathers to give them. It is the Lord who goes before them. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Let's pray. Thank Amen. you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This word we are reading today is showing us we still have God who speaks. Our God still direct, he still speaks. So we must know that if he is still speaking, we do not have to fear. Tell your neighbor, fear is your enemy. If you can see there, you realize that already Joshua was afraid. People of Israel were afraid. And God was repeating the words that they were spoken before about Joshua. He said, uh, I mean, Moses was saying, can you see? I'm very old now. You people, you still want me to do what I was doing before. And I've got restrictions because God doesn't want me to cross the river Jordan. But God is about to do something as long as you don't fear. 
Here we could see that the fear was just attachments to failure in the people of Israel. In verse 3 he says, it is the Lord, your God, who will cross ahead of you. No more me now. God will do it for you. Here you can see that the people that were trusting Moses and when Moses was tired when he was old when he could not do what he could do before they have to be given a way out. That's all my friend. Though there are promises of God upon your life, if fear is still ruling you, your enemies will overpower you. So that's what Moses was trying to say. Here in the Amplified Bible, in verse, uh, let me say two, he shows Moses was showing himself as a spiritual and, and military leader. It means Israel were also facing enemies and fight them. At the time of Moses. But they were overcoming those enemies. Now, if you can see here, in verse four, verse four, Moses said, The Lord will do to them just as he did to Sihon and Og, the king of the Amorites. Where there's a king, they are followers. Moses is reminding them, if you remember what happened when I was still leading as a leader. He said, though I'm not there, you must know that when the Lord is leading you through this young man, he will make sure that he will still go to do what he was doing before. But your enemy is fear. Your enemy is fear. You know, most of the time I found that it's only fear for nothing that we have that challenges us and makes us not to understand that God is still with us. Because when I read Matthew 10, especially 28 to 36, I just want us to go there, we read it. Matthew 10, Matthew 10, Tell someone say, my friend, your enemy is not me. It's fear. It's not witches and wizards. It's your fear. 28. 28. Can we read 28 then? It says what? Just stop there. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body and the spirit. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, Amen. but cannot kill the soul. Amen. Uh -huh. You can see that verse there. 29, read. 29. Uh -huh. Don't be afraid of those who kill I will have a memory. 29, it says what? Aditara chepedi, dikare kwa kapeni. Umilieti hiya chona, ikasi welefa sere tatawe no asarati. Are not two little sparrows sold for a copper coin? And yet not one of them fails to the ground apart from your father's will. Amen. You can see. Let me read again. And yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. Even, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Amen. Why? Because for the 
Father is sovereign and has a complete knowledge. Amen. So do not fear. So you are more valuable than many sparrows. I was reading this, I began to understand that God is telling us he is aware and understand his knowledge of being aware of you. And there's no need to worry. If we can still see a sparrow that can be sold with a money you don't need. What about your hairs? That you can still count them. Why do you have to worry? He's beginning to say, I can see beyond what you think I can see. Therefore, you are important than anything you think is, is not important. He is still aware of you and is, is minding about you. Do you know why we, we worry most of the time? We think God has forgotten us. The reason why we worry is because of that. And if God says, I, can, I know the, the number of your hairs. What about your worry? What about what you are searching? Not long I realized that. I just realized that we are spending time for things that God will provide. I, I just found when I read this scripture, this scripture is showing us that God is aware of your need. Maybe if we read here, we can change how we pray. Because the way we pray, we pray as if God he can see us. We, we, we want to take attention of him. It says good as, you know, when somebody is far. If you want the person to look at you, just say, hey. you, you, you must shake to make the person to see. You must vibrate so that the person will see there's a limit. God is showing that that is a prayer of fear. You know, a prayer of fear, you know, it also makes you to not to be comfortable where you are. Always you want to take attention so that people will come to help you. So that is what the Bible says. That's why Bible read. Look when it goes down there. It says, therefore, the one who confesses and acknowledges me before men, that one I also confess and acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. Right, look at this 34. It says, I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have come to bring peace, but a short. I have come to bring peace, but a short. Can you see that? And it says 36. The man's enemies will be members of his own household. Why? Because when one believes, another one does not believe. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Let me show you why Jesus was speaking all these things. Fear, we are challenged on the side of fear with these four or five things. Number one is, we need to know that God case for us. Or is aware of us. So, 
we are being challenged so challenge to challenge us so that we question, we question if, if, if truly we know that he is aware. If, if now we are not knowing he is aware, we fear. Number two, it talks about we must not be afraid to stand for the truth of our salvation. Because Jesus was saying, he was afraid to confess me among the people. Here we are also challenged if we can speak about him. And we prove that we don't fear because we know, we know him. It's another challenge, number three. It's our family. Even our family will be against. So if we have fear of losing so them, we are questionable on what we believe in. If you say you are a child of the living God and you are afraid to lose something for him, it means we are questionable somewhere. There. Number four, we must be having a weapon and this weapon is called Indua. Listen to this. We are not afraid to challenge to challenge we are not supposed to be afraid of suffering or pain or rejection. You know the reason why our Christianity is shaking is because when we meet challenges, fear comes. And this fear makes us to try to find our own meaning so that people will accept us or will be accepted in our society. But, but he who does not have fear of that challenge doesn't care on anyone who asks. Family or any relative. If someone asks you and say, Look at, where is your God? Is it me? If the person say he's not doing anything, you can answer and say it's because you can't see. But now, if you go to a point where you, go, you are challenged, challenged and you are afraid to answer them about your God, automatically you can endure. You will find the wrong formulas to approach life. That is the reason why fear is overcoming us. Fear is really overcoming us. You see, we say we have got faith. No, we have fear. That's oh, why when we, we pray, nothing happens. Because you need to pass oh, so some levels of checking you, of dealing with you. So that when you say, in the name of Jesus, a person who cannot be afraid of any rejection. A person that when people talk against, he doesn't mind. Look here, if you are a cup, and there's water inside, automatically people will say there's water there. People must talk something that is you. It's possible that they can say it's paraffin. But you find you are still holding water, but they mistake it. paraffin. So now you reach a level where you, you can't be afraid of anyone who says because you know what you are carrying. Can you just say, my friend, I know what I'm carrying. I'm not afraid to face anything. Number three, 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 number Always fear, 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 fear. Now when you want to pray now, now that fear comes. Fear comes to you. Fear comes to you. Let's read first John. Maybe it will help us concerning the issue of fear. First John. John. Chapter 1. 
Maybe we read chapter 4, 16 to 18. Chapter 4, 16 to 18. Today we don't have people here who are talking about Jesus here. Yes. Yes. Chapter 4, 16 to 18. Yes. Chapter 4, 16 to 18. Verse 16. Let's 16. read from there. Verse 16. It says what? I want to read it. Now. It says, we have come to know by personal observation and experience. I just, I just want to read everything there. And believe with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us. Amen. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God. Amen. And God abides continually in him. Mm. In this union and fellowship with him, love is completed and perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Amen. With assurance and boldness to face him. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. There is no fear in love. In other words, dread does not exist. But perfect Complete, full-grown love drives out fear because fear involves, let's call it punishment. Let's or it is torment. A... I found that whoever has fear cannot produce a complete thing. I have to tell you that if you have fear, and you are writing exam. You will even fail what you know. You will remember it later. Fear will torment you. It, it involves what? Torment. 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 Here, let's read verse 16 again. Maybe, maybe, maybe it will help us in this way. It says, we have come to know. You, you know this verse is telling us that we are not just living a Christian, we know. We have come to know. You see when you have come to the place and you find now you know. You are coming from somewhere. But now you are here to know. Therefore, someone cannot take you back. Because even where you come from, you know. That word is saying, you have too much knowledge of where you come from and where you are. That the experiences of fear affect you how how, how, how wide, how big. And you understand that you cannot have fear. Because you know him. If you say, I know Christ, you'll be able to approach him with confidence. The Bible says, we approach the throne with confidence to receive mercy and grace. That confidence establishes us to understand that we are not trying. You know some people think you are trying. So they think what you're supposed to produce is ordinary. Because they think you are trying. So yourself, you know that torment is not part of you. We have come to know. The Bible says, he who knows, he won't have fear. Because he can still approach God as he is. He knows that wherever he is, he will present to him. And you know, this verse is telling us that where you are now, you represent him. And fear 
is the one that is changing your image. Changing your assignment. Changing the plan of God upon your life. I don't know if you're hearing me. Can you see now I'm here? Yeah, I'm representing Christ. I don't know if you're hearing that. So the same fruits must happen. But we cannot produce the best. If we are still fearing, we are going to face torment, failure, shame, difficulty. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you know something you want it, approach it with confidence. Approach it with confidence. Not long I was, I will give you an example so that you understand. No, you won't, you won't take it. Not long here I found that uh, many brothers here want to marry, but they are not working. But there are ladies who are working. But you know, these brothers they want to marry those ladies. But the problem is these ladies are on a higher level. Now, when they want to approach them now, those levels affect them. And they forget one in them. That they can still do better than what they are saying. I don't know if you are hearing me. Now they are judged by what they are saying. And they forget that they can still produce the best because they are representing someone who is called Jesus Christ. I don't know if you are hearing me. So now when they approach there, Saliva steady. <laughs> they don't know whether to swallow it or <laughs> to spit it. If they spit it, <laughs> the sister will say, is there any problem <laughs> with you? <laughs> if they swallow it, <laughs> it means they are delayed to speak what <laughs> they are saying. This is a serious challenge <laughs> even challenge is serious. We, we have been delayed. <laughs> Oh, we can't express ourselves. We can't speak like Jesus. We say, I can see you fig tree. We will never have figs again. We are delayed, but oh, we can't speak a complete thing. We can't bring results. This is the time now, you people, when you cast away fear, faith must come. You must speak something that you will see. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell me, I'm tired of speaking things I don't uh, This uh, This will happen. Sometimes we we'll give ourselves even months. And so within one month, I will be doing this. Nothing happens. You extend. You just extend. carry on extending. There's fear somewhere. And this fear brings doubt. And this doubt is your trap. It delays you. It stops you. It affects you. But today, I'm here to tell you, whatever you will say here, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, say, hey, why fear, 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 fear? Look at this, 1 Peter 5, 7. He says, Peter, what, Peter, 5, 7. Because he cares for us. He watches us carefully. Because he cares for us. He watches us carefully. When I'm talking about this issue of you can't produce the best, I've been talking about Ananias and then I was say, but how did Ananias respond to the call of the living God? I went to read there. When I read there, I found that Ananias, 
He was praying. After he prayed, God spoke with him. Jesus was speaking. And he never had fear. What he said, he just said, Lord, I heard. He was, he was referring to the people who fear. I heard people that are fearing. They say this about this man. He didn't say, I fear. That's why the Lord sent him. That is why I was learning that many times we are using the statements of the people who have got no faith. Fear. And these statements are affecting us. On our assignments. If you read it there, he says, I heard by who? By the Come people on. in Jerusalem. Oh, that's why God didn't go that there. Why that's why God. Jesus could not go there. That is why because Jesus fear God 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 God. limits you. It affects your assignment. Tell, tell your neighbor, fear, fear limits you. Fear and it affects your assignment. If your assignment is, is, is affected, the life you are living now is no longer your life. I don't know if you are hearing me. If now your assignment is affected, it means the life you are living is no longer your life. After this service today, God will restore you. Can you read Acts 9.10? That's where I found this scripture. 9.10. Acts 9.10. Didiro chapter 9 verse 10. Are you there? Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Okay, let me read if you're not there. Now, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, you know, I love the, the way the Lord presents things here. He just never came in there. I think our Lord is having order. Then he said, I have seen you in the vision. Are you in the vision? You know, when the Lord calls you, fear goes away. The, the moment, you know, the, if the angel just appear, you have fear. But the first thing that the Lord does, if he just come and say, Ananias, automatically fear is gone. That demon is gone. If you read there, it says, Here I am, Lord. If you have fear, you can say this. Can you see we are crying to hear from God? But our response shows we have no fear. When you are praying, 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 when you open one eye, you are not seeing your own eyes. You are not seeing your own eyes. You see shadow. You begin to cast now. See, I cast you. Later you realize. Later you realize it's your shadow. You just realize later ah, you are casting your own shadow. Because when you do your hands like if you don't want to do like. And when you fight, you realize that later you realize ah, you are casting your shadow. What more if now? The Lord say, Ananias, you will get out through the window. Yeah, this man was not afraid. Here I am. I don't know if you are hearing that. To show that he, he never had fear. And the Bible presenting as a disciple. A disciple is just a follower. He, he, he was not even fall in the line of apostle. And he is just a disciple. But he could hear the voice and say, Here I am. Okay, let's read. Look at it. And the Lord said to him, Get up. Can you hear that verse there? The Lord said, Get up. You know, here it's like the Lord was, was direct. He said, Get up. Way, this man was praying. He was on his knees. And the Lord said, Get up. And go. Get up. And go. Get up. And go. He said, get up and go to the street called Street. And ask the house of Judas for a man from Tatas. Tatas, 
named Saul. For he strayed there. In a vision, he has seen a, a man named Ananias come in. The places he has on him so that he may regain his sight. Listen. But Ananias answered. Lord, I have heard from many people about this man. I have heard about this man. By many people. Especially how much suffering and evil he has brought on your saints at Jerusalem. And here in Damascus, he has authority from the high priest to put in chains all who call on your name. But, but the Lord said to him, We are crushing what the people who are fearing. Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings in the sons of Israel. Let's go to verse 17. Verse 17. So Ananias left. Anania Aya. And entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul. Anania Aya at This man was not having fear. He said, Brother Saul. Amadia Tar Saul. The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can see and then immediately something happened. This is the results. Listen to this. We are so limited because of fear. You know fear makes us to change ourselves to be like other people. This man, he went with his own assignment well, now with the words he had. He said, Brother Saul, to the man that he heard about, he was able to say, you are my brother. And God is delivering you. This man, if there was nobody called Jesus or no relationship with Jesus. He was supposed to have approached this man with fear. Even what to say, brother, you could not even say that. I just love what Jesus did also. When Jesus saw Judas coming, he was not afraid. He said, he called him friend. He called him friend. He said, this is So, fear affects how we present things. Fear makes us to talk things in a very hateful way. It it makes us to retaliate. Things that we can change becomes impossible ah, by the way we present them. Can you touch your neighbor and say, my friend, you won't die. It is just fear. You won't fail. It is just fear. You will reach where you want to go. Don't but mind about fear. fear. It is just fear. That fear will tell you, look at the food, you are finishing it. Go for fasting. Your fasting is fear. Whatever you do is fear. If you are doing it by fear, you are doing zero. Let, let me pray for someone here who is overcoming fear. And receiving faith today, whatever you speak, it will come to pass in this place. In the name of Jesus, if you believe, shout hallelujah. Think about, uh, you know, you are supposed to be a president. Or maybe 
Our president is entering here. You are the one to welcome here. The way you will clean your face. The way you will try to organize yourself. So that you suit him. It shows that somewhere, somehow, you are affected somewhere. Even the blessings that are supposed to come, they have to make us to fight fear. Unless you overcome that fear, they won't come. Organize yourself, deal with yourself, so that when the blessing comes, it will suit you. I don't know if you are hearing me. So that's how you need to do Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor, say, my friend. Do you think God has failed you? Or you have been overpowered by your fear? This year, you will see what you want to see if you can overcome this fear. I was hearing one statement. Uh, this statement has troubled me when I went to U.S. Statement in Mama, I called Mama. I said, Mama, uh, let's pray. I want to go. Mama said to me, Mama, I'm telling you this way. When you reach the U.S., U.S. Make sure that you find another wife. Ah, you know this statement troubled me a lot. Before I sleep, I check if mama will call, no call. I remember the statement, find another wife. I said, let me just Keep quiet and, and wait. Tomorrow, I said, can I call in the morning? I said, Mama will call. Ah. Mama overslept. Eight and nine. Eight and nine. I said, ah, Mama, she's serious. Did she find another? That's why she said, that is why I take it another. <laughs> You know, I realize that the reason why many people lose their partners is fear. You know, from there I call Mama. Mama. I'm surprised you're not calling. She explained to me, is it, is it because you say I must find another way? She was laughing. She said, yes. Say, yes, yes. yes. Hey. I say, hey, I want to call you through Skype. <laughs> now I want to check, is she having <laughs> someone? <laughs> I know she can't do that. But Mama was talking about Jesus. Mama but that statement bothered me when statement I'm not receiving a call. She said, yeah, I mean, no, there's nobody you can get except Jesus. Now. Even, even myself here, I'm with Jesus. I said, I understand. Now, I said, I understand. <laughs> but, the reason why you lose, fear come upon you. You begin to guard this person now. When this person passes you, who's greeting that one? From there, you begin to bring fight unnecessary Why this person shake a hand this way? Uh, you know, love makes you to conquer any torment. If a person now, like I'm here, if I pray for mama like this, 
And it's not mama. And I see mama. And mama, she's having fear. And mama on a lipo ifo. It's a torment. Ah. What is it pastor is doing now? Is he checking her red lips? Can I tell you this? Many fights and shame that are happening in families were caused by fear. Let's overcome fear today. Listen, when fear is gone, trust is established. I don't know if you're hearing me. When fear is gone, trust is established. You will see a boat doing like this. Because, you are are inside. Inside. because fear is God. When people say, hey, we are dying. You are yourself, we are enjoying it. When people are crying, you are inside the taxi. And the taxi is going like this. And because you trust the one, you don't have fear. Yourself, you are enjoying it. It makes you to sleep. I was with my brother one day. Uh, my younger brother. We had a pastor from Mozambique. I was driving one car, you know, a Range Rover that there is a smaller one. I was still staying in Bedford View. Bedford View. When I was driving, ah, I didn't know this man was asleep. I drive 200. And it was late from the church. I realized it's 200. <laughs> from nowhere. This car lose control. It began to do like this. When it's going there, I turn it. It goes like this. I was not afraid. But there was something that I was recognizing on this man. Here I'm hearing it was Ruzi. He was hitting. He was behind. He was hitting there. When we turn like this, he hit there. And he hit there. But there was this man no, no, sitting on the belt. He was asleep. <laughs> I'm struggling with the car. He's going there. He's going there. He's going there. He's going there. The moment when the car does like this, and enter the road like this, you wake up. Can I tell you something? So, as a Ruzi, you saw what the car was saying. He, he asked us and said, What is happening? He, he was enjoying himself. He asked me, I said, What is happening? I said, We have nearly got an accident. He did oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. By the following day, I said, hey, Baba, I don't want to work with that first. <laughs> I don't know if you are hearing me. We Christians must be on that line. Of that man. Anything must happen. But we must be comfortable. Do you know what David said? He said, though, let's just go there. He said, though I perish, though I pass, though I pass where there is a shadow of death. I do not fear anything. I'm just trying to make you to understand that scripture. Said, Though I come across death, I don't fear anything. Because I know, I know what the Lord is able <laughs> to me. He says, Your rod and your staff. Is with me. They comfort me. But you are the one who was directing me. When they go to the other side, I don't fear anything. Because I know where I'm going. 
There are people here today. Don't fear anything. The Lord is taking you somewhere. Don't be afraid. The Lord is taking you where you are praying for. If you believe, shout hallelujah. You know, listen to this. There's something I'm not fearing, I can tell you. Because the Lord has spoken about charis. You know, it makes me to rest. It, because I have come to know. Once you have come to know, you, have, you, have, you rest. rest. You know what is coming. Is it true what I'm saying? You just know that the Lord is about to do a new thing. Fear won't rule you. I prophesy you. This year, you will take the blessings in abundance without fear. Listen, people will think you are making yourself better. Don't fear. He's taking you there. I say, He's taking you there. Say, so The Lord is taking me there. So, if you know anyone takes you to Venda, as long as you are anyone, as long as you are anyone, just tolerate. You will the sign of you will drama design. Don't worry, don't worry. What is not your portion? You might be sick, don't worry. You might be challenged, don't worry. Fear must not rule you. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. I said the Lord is on your side. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Say the Lord is on your side. Can you ask your neighbor? Go with Shemaki. What are you fearing? I'm stopping there.